Hello, this is Joel Dietz of Ethercast, here with Vitalik of Ethereum, um, who has just gone through the first 24 hours of the crowd sale, um, raising, I believe, more than 3 million USD, which is a pretty good start. And um, Vitalik, what are your thoughts and feelings at this moment? It's uh, good, to, you know, it's good that it's finally happening. We've been uh, trying to get a sale launched for uh, about half a year now, and the development has been kind of slower than we had hoped because we didn't, we didn't have that much funding. But, you know, that particular phase is over, and hopefully we'll be able to really start accelerating the actual development of the product and uh, get things done in six months as we had originally hoped. So what do you think are the sort of minimum funding requirement that you need to build a platform stuff? Um, for Ethereum 1.0, I would say in the five to ten million dollar range. And it seemed like, it, if I remember correctly from your budget, a, a whole million of that was allocated for legal. Is that? Um, so the uh, the one million is basically a legal contingency fund. So our legal advice had basically told us that you know worst case scenario, fully fledged court case would take around a million to fight. So we figure it's worth in keeping that million just to be safe. Do, do you mind sharing anything about how much it costs to get these legal docs in order that you guys have now? or uh, The ones that have now, I, th I think our legal costs uh, were somewhere in the, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, so you know. Pretty high upfront costs then right now for anyone looking to do a crowd sale and well, be as exhaustive as you guys have been. Yeah, I mean, the nice, the nice thing is that we've... Did, you know, we've done all of this stuff and we do, and you know, we'd like to make as much of the the results of our efforts as we, as we can, uh, as we can uh, open for other groups to use potentially. Um, and you are doing this through a Swiss entity that's going to be dissolved after the crowd sale is complete. Is that right? What was the motivation? It'll be dissolved after Ethereum 1.0 1, 1 is launched. So there's some a fairly int intricate legal uh, uh, legal arguments uh, around that. It's basically this uh, some complexities involving having having an entity and ha and uh, having a an actual tradable token at the same time. So does that mean you're going to full DAO after the dissolution of that entity, or well, what's we, the kind yeah, of? we don't really have. So we do have. We don't really have. Uh, that fixed lo uh, fixed along certain plans at this point. Like you know, we have we have intentions. We have the idea that we also have this nonprofit foundation, and uh, we intend to be doing cryptocurrency research. But in term, like the further you go into the future, the more hazy things are at this point. And so, the, I guess there's no longer any team anything on the Ethereum website, which is a little bit odd, given that it was such a prominent feature before. Can, <laughs> yeah, can you I mean, comment just, on that? You know, we just figured that, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> everyone was sort of unhappy about that, about that page in their own different ways. Some people were, some people weren't on it. Some people were happy that, pe some people were annoyed that some, that people who were really contributing were on it. So we just decided that it might be simpler to put all that off to, uh, to a separate section of the website. So there will, there actually will still be a, yeah, who, a who page. In, in another location. And at this point, the intent is to sort of organize it in two levels, where one is the team, it's everyone, well, the core team, everyone who's getting paid, and then as all of the volunteers. Um, and so what is the sort of base organizational structure then? Are you guys operating out of that Swiss entity, or is there kind of some ad hoc board? or? So the there's, uh, so there's, a, we have the non-profit found, uh, foundation. Then we have the entity that's conducting the sale as a Swiss uh, company owned by the foundation. So both of them, both of those have boards. Uh, there's so basically, yep, you know, they're they're entities. So there's a sort of standard legal structure that you guys are operating in the context of them. Yeah, there's a standard legal structure. The the full details are actually available, I think, in our development plan. Oh, okay. Um, and so has anything changed recently? I, I noticed the one l little change um, is that the inflation is now 26% of the total first sale rather than thir or 30 or whatever it was before. Yeah, before it was 30, before that it was 50. 
So uh, what motivated that change? Is there some um, complex formula? First of all, well, the, the 30 to the 26 drop was small. Basically, the idea is that, you know, we were... The, the pre-mine was was uh, cut down, so we figured it might make sense to cut it down proportionately. Um, and any other changes that you'd like to comment on since since February or when we yeah, so last? Yeah, so the two pre-mines, basically there's one for early contributors at 9.9% and then one and then an endowment at 9.9%. So it's about three times smaller than we had been intending to in January, maybe about 50% smaller mm -hmm. than, uh, than April. Um... There's, I mean, the price of Ether is uh, going to be 1337 ETH per BTC at the end and 2000 Ether per Bitcoin now. Duration, 42 days instead of 60. Um, I think those are probably the, the main de details in terms of specifics of the sale itself. But then there's, of course, uh, all of the progress around the actual Ethereum project. Yeah. So, and that's been pretty good so far when... Uh do you concur? Or? Yeah, so the thing that we launched concurrently with the sale is uh, Proof of Concept 5, where C++ and Go are interoperable, um, which is a pretty important milestone because, you know, this idea of having two distinct implementations of a Turing complete programming language always give the exact same answer in all cases. In some ways, it's sort of like a NASA level uh, effort in, term, in terms of the, the precision and, and carefulness that it requires. So it's... Uh, It'll probably be one of the one of the hardest things that we, that we'll have to do, especially once the the other two clients start getting more in sync. But I think it's a good one. If we do that, then we'll be. Sh it's a it's a way of being absolutely sure that there aren't any crazy issues with the protocol. You know, we've seen with Bitcoin that there's the bugs kept kept on popping up even like three years down the line. Is there any move to standardize this or scripting language? Because um, I know that. There's a little bit of a, a bunch of obviously you have the kind of yeah. system level stuff, but um, the scripting you... language is uh, like it's the sort of the structure is basically finished, but there's a couple of opcodes that still might change. So you know, we might look at standardizing it. It's basically you know the Ethereum virtual machine and the, and the Ethereum scripting platform. It is something that's actually very useful even independently of Ethereum the blockchain. So, you know, if, like, in general, for example, if he wants to do a sort of trustworthy computation, so, com or, well, not, re not re so much trustworthy computation, but verifiable computation, so computation where, you know, you could then, you could submit a challenge and say, prove that everything between step 6200 and step 6600 was done legitimately, or, you know, provide a, some kind of deterministic stack trace, or even cryptographically verify portions of stack traces combined with Merkle trees. So there's a whole bunch of applications of that kind of technology. You know, I could easily see groups like Open Transactions coming to use it at some point. And so that's definitely something that sh probably should be standardized and uh, almost pack packaged up into an independent solution. So it seems like it's been an extremely positive uh, 24 hours. Are, are there any c concerns you have either about the crowd sale or just kind of, you know, development in the next six to eight months? Um, like what are the, I guess, core core risks that you see moving forward? Um, risks uh, at this point, not that many. It's just a matter of taking the money, really, really spinning up the, the the development hubs, and just getting things done. Yeah, I, I know that in the past you had talked about transparency. Obviously, yeah. that's something that people come when they look at Swarm and say, uh, you know, how transparent are you guys going to be? Right. And uh, you talked about that quite a lot. What What are your plans for that? Yeah, we we want to be as trans as transparent as as, as we practically can be. It's uh, still something that we're figuring out in some respects. So you don't have any specific plans for that at this point, of kind of how that will happen or <laughs> uh, specific plans no I mean at this point you know we haven't even begun spending the first Bitcoin out of the Exodus address so yeah okay well um, that's great Vitalik I wish you guys the best definitely and um, you know very excited to see how things develop both with the uh, crowd sale and uh, platform development yeah thank you until next time you too Bye.